everybody! Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. One of the easiest ways to dress up any room in your house is by adding a table runner. Table runners can be draped over tables, but also countertops or sideboards or tall pieces of furniture or desks or credenzas, anywhere that you want to add a little decorative interest and possibly some protection too. They can be simple and plain or really fancy and themed. They fold up and fit away into relatively small places because they're usually fairly thin, but my favorite use of a table runner is to hide all those nicks and scratches and dents and stains and life events that happen to our favorite pieces of furniture. <laughs> so today, I'm going to show you guys how to make this really pretty table runner that I designed. It's a simple enough pattern, but it looks deceptively fancy. I've made mine all in white, but you can make yours in any color that you want. And we've got instructions in the description box down below on how to vary the width of your table runner, so be sure to check that out. And I'll show you in today's tutorial how easy it is to make this as short or as long as you like to. That said, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up this really pretty table runner together. For my festive table runner, I'm using about 150 to 175 grams of a lightweight size 3 yarn. This is also known as baby weight or sport weight or baby sport weight, size 3 lightweight yarn. I'm using acrylic, but if your table runner is going to come into contact with any kind of heat, then you might want to consider using cotton or wool yarn, something with a high melt point. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and today's hook is a 5.5 millimeter or an I-9. And once you've got that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Then we're going to chain 31. That's 3 one, 31 chains. After you've got 31 chains, we're going to find the 8th chain from the hook. So count backwards, 8 chains, and into that chain we're going to work an extended V-stitch, and that's what this is. Double crochet, so double crochet into that 8th chain from the hook, chain 3, double crochet into the same chain, and that is an extended V. Double crochet, chain 3, double crochet, worked into the same chain or stitch. Chain 1 for a spacer. So in between every extended V, we have a chain 1 spacer. Skip 4 chains, find the 5th, and work an extended V into it. That's double crochet, chain 3, and double crochet into the same stitch or chain, and then chain one for a spacer. And that's what you're going to do all the way across for your first row. Skip four stitches, find the fifth, work double crochet, chain three, double crochet into it, that's an extended V, extended V stitch, and then chain one for a spacer in between each V. And I'll see you at the end. You should have five extended V's all the way across your first row with this little turning chain sequence on the end. That should leave you with three chains left. Skip two, find the last chain, and double crochet into it. And that is the end of row one. There you go. Row two and every even row, you're going to chain three to begin. Turn your work, and this is super easy. You're going to work seven double crochets into the middle of every extended V. So every chain three space, that middle of those extended Vs, you're just going to work seven double crochets. No chains, no spaces, no gaps, nothing. Just seven double crochet into every extended V of the previous row. And I'll catch up with you at the end of row two. So, if you had five extended V's in row one, you should have five large fans in each of them at the end of row two, and every even row for that matter. This is how we end every even row, including this one. So you've got your big long chain that started the row before. You're going to look at the top of it, find the very top of it, 
and then pick the one right next to it. So that would be the top of your huge long turning chain. You want to pick the one, one away, so pretend that that little chain there is a spacer, and double crochet into the second chain away from that extended V. And that's it. That's row two in every even row. Row three and every odd row from here on out begins with a chain seven, I'm sorry, a chain four. <laughs> four chains, turn your work, and then into the middle of each of those fans. So if it helps to count, one, two, three, four, the fourth double crochet, the middle double crochet of each of those giant fans is where you're going to anchor your extended V-stitch. So work double crochet, chain three, double crochet into that very middle stitch of each big fan all the way across. Remember to chain one in between each of your extended V's. Skip over to the next fan, find the middle stitch, if you have to count, it's number four, and work an extended V into the top of it. Double crochet, chain three, double crochet. Work that all the way across, and I'll catch up with you at the end. So at the end of row three, in every odd row, you should be back to having five of your extended V stitches. I love the odd rows because they're super quick, they zip by really fast. When you get to the end, you're going to find the top of the chain three, and you're going to double crochet into it. So find the top of your chain three from the previous row, should be right next to your last double crochet, there it is, and double crochet into it. So no chain counts or anything like that, just double crochet right into the top of the chain three of the previous turning, and that's it. That's row three in every odd row. So every row begins with a chain three. I should say every even row begins with a chain three. Every odd row begins with a chain four. Every even row is just seven double crochets into the top or the middle of every single one of those extended V's. And then remember to skip a chain and then double crochet into the second chain away from your last V when you finish the row. And every Odd row is a chain four turn and then an extended V stitch in the top or the middle of every single one of those fans from the previous row. Don't forget your chain ones in between each one. And that is it. I'll let you work that pattern rotating every odd and even row back and forth, back and forth for a little while and I'll catch up with you in a bit. So far, I've worked 17 rows of this alternating pattern stitch. So that's every odd row is the extended V stitch, every even row is the large seven double crochet fans. So you can continue alternating those two rows until your table runner is as long as you like. How long is long enough? Well, that's entirely up to you. There is no set row count here. Uh, I am going to make mine long enough so that it drapes over my round table, but all of our tables are different sizes, including our sideboards. You might want to put it on a sideboard. So you can keep a measuring tape handy if you know the exact length you want to make it, or you can just keep draping it over the piece of furniture you have intended it for and uh, decide how long it is you like. The only thing is the last row you work in your Table runner needs to be an odd row, so you can make it as long as you like, just make sure you end on an extended V-stitch row. That should be a last row for you. And once you've got it as long as you like, come on back and we'll put a border on it. I have now completed 59 rows of the pattern stitch. Before blocking or adding a border, my table runner is 19 centimeters or seven and a half inches wide and 108 centimeters or 42, half, 42 and a half inches long. So that's before blocking or adding a border. I've ended on an odd row, which is the extended V-stitch row, and now I'm ready to add a border. So we're gonna work backwards across the row, just like we would turn and continue working the regular pattern stitch. But this is the first row of the border. Into this space, or into the top of the same stitch that you joined in. You can use the spaces or the stitches. You're just going to work a single crochet. Into the middle of that V, that extended V, you're going to work two double crochets. Chain two. And two more double crochets. Into 
Into the space between V-stitches, you're going to single crochet. And you're going to repeat that all the way across. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into every single V-stitch, and single crochet into the space between V-stitches. Once you've repeated that new pattern into every single V-stitch, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, and into the space between them, a single crochet, all the way across, that brings you to the end. You're going to single crochet into that space, Turn your corner and immediately start working the same pattern into the edge of every even row. So into the edge of every big fan row, you're going to work that two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, and into the spaces between, you're going to work a single crochet. So the big two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet goes into the edge of every even row and into the edge of every odd row, so there's the big space, just single crochet. And you're going to work that all the way down the side. Once you've worked that all the way down the first long side, that should bring you to the bottom. So there's my last little two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet worked into the side of my second row, and we're back to row one. Single crochet into that space, turn the corner, and into the bottom, so here's this little space, the little, the bottom of the chain that our V's were worked into. So this little thing right here is where you're going to work the two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And into the nice big spaces in between, you're going to single crochet. And then just repeat that all the way across. So the two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet goes into the little space and the single crochet goes into the big space. Once you've finished your last two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, that should bring you to the corner and that's identifiable by your little tail left on where we started the whole thing. You're going to single crochet into that space, turn and begin working up the other side. So remember, you want to work the two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into the edge space of each of those chain, I'm sorry, row twos or the even rows, the big fan stitch rows. And the single crochet goes into the edge of each odd row or the rows that have the large extended V's in them. Work that all the way up the edge and I'll see you back at the top. Once you've worked that all the way back up the other side, your last two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet will be worked into the side of your second last row, which was a fan row. That brings you back up to the corner where you started this border row with a single crochet. You're just going to slip stitch right into that single crochet. That's border row one. Now for the final row, border row two, we are going to begin single crocheting immediately into the top of these first two single or double crochets from the previous row. When you get to the chain two space in between sets of double crochets, you're going to work a single crochet, two chains, and a single crochet into that space. And then you're going to single crochet into the top of each of the next two. So all double crochets from the previous row get a single crochet in the top of them. Every chain two space gets single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And when you get to the little single crochets between your little fans here, you're going to slip stitch into them. So into every single crochet from the previous row, you slip stitch. Single crochet into the top of every double crochet, single crochet, chain two, single crochet into every chain two space, single crochet into those double crochets, so into the top of all the double crochets, and then when you get to the single crochets from the previous row, just slip stitch into them. Same thing goes when you get to the corner, you're going to go single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, single, single, into that little single crochet from the previous row, just slip stitch and keep on going. So there's no need to worry about working corners, you're just going to work a single crochet into the top 
of every double crochet, single crochet, chain two, single crochet into every chain two space, and when you get to a single crochet, slip stitch into it. Work that all the way around, and I'll catch back up with you at the beginning. Once you get all the way around, back to the very beginning where you worked your first slip stitch and single crochet of row two of the border, you're going to finish off single, 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 chain two, single, 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 and then slip stitch into the slip stitch that you began row two with. You sort of closed off row one and began row two with it. That's it. You should have a nice flat little line that connects the corner shells and you can fasten off your yarn. If you're using a slippery yarn, make sure you give yourself enough tail that you can weave it back and forth a few times and it won't undo. So flip it over, grab your yarn needle, and you can weave your tail in and out across the backs of some of those single crochets from the very last border row. Don't pull too tightly, you don't want to pull anything out of alignment. Once you've woven in that tail, and don't forget about the little one back at the very beginning, make sure that one gets in there too. I highly recommend you block it and leave it to dry. That will make it lie nice and flat and very graceful, especially if you have a little bit of rippling around your edges with the border. So I highly recommend blocking. And then you're done. And there you have it, one really pretty table runner. Perfect for your next festive table setting or any little corner of your house that needs a little something something. <laughs> and that's it, I hope you had fun making this along with us this week and we will see you really soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week everybody, bye.